Hey guys, so I had a lot of requests for a video on shading, so I went ahead and did that. <laughs> I, drew, I drew a ball next to an ear. We're gonna study the shadows. That's right, okay. So we're using the ball as a reference for the shadows in the ear. So there's form shadows, there's cast shadows, there's reflective light, there's highlights, there's midtones, halftones. All that good stuff. So I'll go over all of that in this video and more. If you can, pick up a t-shirt. I uh, really like these shirts. I like this yellow one the best. And it looks great with the hat. And it looks great with the jacket. Kind of like it. I'm thirsty. I want your attention. Pick up a shirt, please. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. I'm going to start off with sketching that, that ball first and then the cast shadow under it. And for the cast shadow, we'll just do an ellipse, a very kind of thin ellipse. And I think I'll shorten it up a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna sketch I'm going to sketch the ear on this side. Okay, so you can see I took huge artistic license with the, uh, the photo reference. And that is A-OK. -okay. This is just a nice little study on lighting and shading and all that. Uh, let's go down here and... and do more <laughs> creative license and sketch in a cast shadow. Alrighty, alrighty. All right, so let's go back to the ball and I'm just gonna sh sharpen up the edge here. And let's say our light source for the ball is somewhere up here. So it's gonna strike the top of the ball and it's gonna leave a highlight. Because our this the sphere is maybe like maybe it's shiny, maybe it's like a what is it called? A cue ball in a pool. And it catches a highlight at the top on that shiny marble surface. And then we'll have the form shadow. Let's we'll run all the way through here and now we have a light side and a dark side so this form shadow is the border between the light and the dark side of our object here so all of this is going to be in shadow as well as the cast shadow so let me i'm going to go ahead and build this form up real quick and then we'll come in and put in the shadow side So I got the really nice uh, form shadow right in the middle. And now I'm going to fill in everything in one single tonal mass. So all the cast shadow, all of the, the shadow side of the ball in the same value, roughly. So let's come in here like so. And this is like really fun. <laughs> this is like my favorite thing to do after like I get a a portrait all laid in and I have all the uh, cast shadows and everything just mapped out and ready to rock and roll and then finally I get to come in and put in all this tone it's so satisfying okay so this part is really important as far as like edges on the cast shadow the cast shadow is crisp and dark the closer it is to the object that is causing the cast shadow so Right here, it's going to be its darkest and most sharp on the edge. And then as we move away, it becomes softer. So we can kind of firm this up, this area right here. And you can also see that when I'm doing this really sharp line, I'm right up on top of my pencil. And as I move away from the object and I'm trying to make this edge softer, I move from the tip of the pencil to the side and then almost completely flat on the edge of the pencil or on the um, the side of the pencil 
trying to make that really soft and kind of blurry. Right, let's clean that up a little bit. And do the same thing on the other side, but not as intense because you want this one to dominate over this one. Now I'm just going to come around the, the, the actual edge of the ball and try to clean that line up a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to come in and hit the occlusion shadow. And the occlusion shadow is areas of the shadow that reflective light just can't reach very well. And it's going to be the darkest part of the shadow. And so it'll be right here. And as we travel down the cast shadow, more and more reflective light is filling it in. And that's also why the edges get a little bit softer. So let's come into this occlusion shadow. And this will be our darkest dark. So now we have the darkest dark and we have the lightest light on this drawing. So we can use those two areas to build up the rest of the drawing. So we have the highest, like the lightest light on the highlight and the darkest dark right down here in the occlusion shadow. So I'm going to come over here and reestablish the darkness of this form shadow based off my darkest dark, knowing that that's going to be the darkest dark. So this one's going to be subservient to that occlusion shadow in that it's not going to be as dark, but it's going to be kind of like secondary to it. Okay, so now I'm going to leave the shadow side and go into the light side and put in some half tones. And those half tones are going to sit right next to that form shadow. And I think that's pretty much it. So we have so we have the highlight and I'll just come over here. So we have the highlight, and then we have the light portion, and then the half tone or mid tone. It depends. It's the same thing, half tone, mid tone. And then here we have, let me place, we have the form shadow. We can also call it the core shadow. And this side, would be the reflective light. And then we have our occlusion shadow, the darkest dark, let's see, occlusion shadow. And then of course, the cast shadow. So basically seven. So we have the cast shadow, occlusion shadow, the reflective light, that form shadow, the half tone, the light, and then the highlight. Okay, so now I'm going to come over to the ear and we're going to work our uh, work our magic on it with some shading and thinking about these different uh, kinds of light and shadow and work our way around the ear. So let's start off with Finding those form shadows, we pretty much have it mapped out. We have, I think, most of the cast shadows, but we didn't do the form shadows. Um, let me first just clean this guy up, make the edges a little bit darker first. All right, so now let's look for those form shadows. So right on top of the ear. And again, I'm pretty much making this up. I mean, you can see a little bit in the, the photo, but I want to show, because some people's ears are very square right here, kind of like turn that corner. So I'm just going to use that because I think that looks kind of neat. And the ears are really fun. You can just really play around with the different shapes. Use your imagination and stuff like that. So down here we got the cast shadow. And I'm going to make this part of the cast shadow a little bit thicker and softer than way up at the top. 
for the same reason we were talking about down here. The closer that cast shadow is to the object causing the shadow, the, the darker and more sharp that edge will be on the cast shadow. And see, so we have a form shadow down here on the earlobe. And because there's a form shadow, it means there's a cast shadow right here. So again, we're hitting that edge really crisp. I'm right on the tip of my pencil. Then I'm going to come down here and hit the side and soften it up and then all the way down. Maybe a little cast shadow here and then a form shadow on top. Looks like there's a little bit of a form shadow here. And of course our cast shadow. In the photo, I'm going to use this as a reference for this part. Where that cast shadow is wrapping around this leg of the anti-helix. The anti-helix has two legs. There's one on the bottom, one on the top. That's what they call it. It's actually called crust, which actually just means leg. So I kind of just use that term instead of the fancy one. So I come over here and then that that cast shadow kind of just drops into that what's called the scaffa, which is this little kind of boat, little canoe shape right here. It kind of separates the helix from the anti-helix. And you can already see kind of like a three-dimensional look just based on that technique of hitting the the cast shadows crisp in one area and soft in the other, depending upon what's how its um, relationship to the thing causing the cast shadow. And then down here we have a little bit of a cast, something like that, and to the down here in the notch, and maybe I'll put a little bit of a form shadow on the tragus. So this is what you call shadow mapping, where you go in after the lay-in, and then you map in the cast shadows and the form shadows. And I'm thinking about looking, I think I'll bring some tone in from the background, and I'm, I think I'll lose this edge right here. I think that'll look kind of cool. I mean, I can kind of talk about that a little bit too which is really a cool technique where you, you lose some of the edges into the background, which kind of makes it feel more atmospheric and, and just looks pretty. Like this one, it's just all straight. It's all clean lines all the way around pretty much. So it doesn't feel like it's a part of the background. But for the ear, I think I'll try that with bringing tone in into the ear this way. Okay, so like we had over here with the ball originally, after doing just the, the basic shape of the ball and the cast shadow and the form shadow, we went in with a single tonal mass and filled everything in on the uh, shadow side. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, I'm going to start on this side and work my way out. And again, I'm blowing through that line right here because I want that lost edge. And that helix looks like it's popping forward a little bit. And the anti, or the, um, excuse me, the uh, anti helix looks like it's popping off uh, into the foreground, whereas the helix is kind of like twisting into the, the background and then popping forward again. Okay, so basically so far what we did, we did the shadow mapping and then we filled everything in with a single value. And now I'm gonna come in just like I did over here with the half tones, and just work on those and try to build up the form. I'm going to come in here now, reestablish the edges of the shadows. Okay, now I'm going to look for the light areas and the highlights. So 
Highlights can be up here on the helix, sometimes on the anti-helix as well, and inside the ear. So you can see one right here, right up against that really crisp edge of that cast shadow. So that's gonna be kind of cool. So I'll put in this kind of mid or a half tone right up to the edge of that highlight so that it really just pops. Let's see, as we come down here, it kind of gets a little bit more value. And then down into the occlusion shadow of the notch of the ear. And let's go ahead and work on the occlusion shadows throughout, especially right here, just like over here on our ball. We have this occlusion shadow. We have it here as well. And then as we fan out, it gets lighter because of that reflective light is filling in the cast shadow. I'm going to come in here and work with a different value of cast shadow depending on the shape of the ear. So it's a little bit darker in this triangular fossa, this area right here. Then as it comes up over the anti-helix, it's catching reflective light a little bit better. And then it comes over to this side and gets lost into the background. Okay, so now that we put the occlusion shadows in, we have our darkest dark, and then we have the highlight here and here as our lightest light. So we can use those two values to judge the values throughout the rest of the drawing. All right, so that's pretty much it for the ear. Let me uh, go ahead and label the shadows just like we did on the ball. So let's start off with the highlight. So we got our highlight right here. And then the light would be secondary to that, which I'm looking for an area. So yeah, right about here. Then we have the half tone which would be a little bit further, a little bit closer to the, the form. And then here we have the occlusion shadow right in the, the notch of the ear and down here. And now let's do the form shadow. And of course, this is the cast shadow. And good spot for the reflective light. I mean, there's some they're pretty much everywhere. But here I was talking about earlier how this is darker because it's sinking into the, it's wrapping around and sinking into that, that uh, trench, that fossa. And then it comes back out right here. So this is a nice reflective light area. So we have highlight, we have the light, we have the half tone, we have the cast shadow, form shadow, the occlusion shadow, and reflective light. So this is a really good exercise to do and you'll see this oftentimes in college. They'll give you cylinders, cubes, triangles, or uh, pyramids and, and uh, this sphere to work on to uh, develop the idea of the different shadow shapes and form shadows and such but I always find it really boring and I just had a really hard time paying attention and finishing the uh, assignments when I was in uh, community college so I find it way more more fun to put alongside of the uh, the sphere and maybe like uh, just a feature an eye eyeball in this case I did the ear which is a really good example of using the different concepts found in that basic ball and and uh, cast shadow kind of setup so I find it way more 
entertaining and uh, useful because you're learning some anatomy as well. So try it yourself. I uh, hope you have fun doing it. Um, and if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments or uh, maybe even on uh, Instagram is a, probably the best place to hit me up for questions in the DMs. Uh, I get a lot of people asking me for critiques and stuff like that. And I try to get uh, two people as fast as I can. It may take a few days, but I do go through them and try to help out everyone I can. So thanks for watching, guys. And uh, pick up a t-shirt if you can and help out the channel. Really appreciate it. And again, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.